This is Atlas Launch Control, one hour, 50 minutes, 47 seconds into the mission of the uh, T-Dracel. And joining us now here on console is Tim Dunn, who was our NASA Launch Director to this flight and the NASA Launch Manager during the countdown. And uh, Tim, I wonder, first of all, give us a snapshot of how this looks like it's all turned out. <laughs> well, thanks, George. Thanks for having me. And uh, obviously, uh, you showed some shots in the launch control room, and uh, we're all thrilled. Successful spacecraft separation, and most importantly, a successful spacecraft acquisition by our ground telemetry. So we've confirmed that we've got a healthy spacecraft so far. So uh, the launch team is thrilled, and as you can imagine, the Tedris L spacecraft team is even more thrilled. Well, take us back to the beginning of the count, and uh, how did the uh, countdown go, and then uh, how did the flight look? Well, it was just gorgeous weather on the Space Coast today, so it would have been a shame not to have gotten a launch off today. Uh, so we, we were blessed with tremendous weather. Uh, we have a wonderful rocket. Uh, we did not work any hardware anomalies on the Atlas V launch vehicle. Uh, our spacecraft, the Tedrasel spacecraft, was rock solid, um, had zero problems with that. We were working as we came into the count today. One lingering concern that uh, popped up on the range yesterday with one range instrumentation site, and that being a radar that is needed to track uh, the rocket as it uh, flies out over the Atlantic. So uh, the uh, range team worked overnight uh, and all through today to get us ready to enter countdown and uh, was able to bring that asset back online during the count for us to have and enable us to launch today. And uh, any any further uh, background on uh, the, the, the short recycle that we had? Oh yeah, that uh, so uh, we get through uh, the radar issue that we had. We uh, had a uh, nominal vehicle, everything looked great. We're uh, about ready to enter uh, that final uh, terminal count at T minus four and counting. And we began to notice uh, just a, about a minute prior to that that we were getting a little bit of noisy data coming back from our open loop spacecraft telemetry at the time. And turns out we were getting a few spacecraft dropouts. The spacecraft team uh, needed a little bit more time. Uh, we decided to remain in the uh, T minus four minute hold till we better understood that. Turned out it was it was uh, a uh, situation with multipathing with the open loop RF transmissions between the uh, antenna at, located at TEL4 and the Atlas V vehicle. And so once that situation was well understood, uh, we, uh, we did uh, discuss that on our anomaly net per our process. And we decided that uh, we would, instead of staying open loop for the next attempt, we would stay on our ground line telemetry, a hard line. Uh, obviously that was very clean data and we made the switch to the open loop RF at uh, T0 or at liftoff. So that was a great plan that the team came up with and we executed that plan and got back in uh, to uh, the countdown, established a new T0 at 33 minutes past the hour and we're able to execute that and had a beautiful liftoff. Well Tim, this is uh, just the start of a very busy year for launch services program so outline some of the missions we've got still coming up. I know Vern mentioned some of them, but it's uh, we've, we've got a lot of missions coming. Well, it is an exciting uh, year for Launch Services Program, this being our first. Uh, we look to uh, go to the West Coast uh, for a couple of Delta II missions this year. We have the OCO-2 mission that's going to launch on a Delta II from Vandenberg Air Force Base, Space Launch Complex 2. Uh, that happens uh, this summer in July. And then in the fall, in November, we go back out to Vandenberg for another Delta II mission, the SMAP mission. And so we're excited uh, to launch on Delta II again. It'll be about two and a half years since our last Delta II launch. Uh, we also have another Atlas V mission that's currently manifested for later in the year, uh, the MMS mission on the East Coast. So uh, we've got a full slate of uh, science missions ahead of us. And uh, everyone in LSP is just thrilled uh, with the TDRSL launch today. Well, Tim, thanks very much. And uh, this has uh, certainly been a happy moment for the TDRS team because they're now 100% on the two. They've got uh, now on orbit for, for uh, 
for their program and uh, maybe another one coming downstream a ways, but the two that they wanted right now, they've got right now. Very good. And if I could, George, uh, I know you mentioned it during the countdown, but uh, this launch was dedicated to Skip Mackey. Uh, memorial launch. Uh, Skip was a dear friend and colleague of ours at NASA, and he was the voice of NASA commentary for years and years. So uh, for Skip's family and his friends and all of his colleagues at NASA, we were very proud, along with ULA, to dedicate this launch, this successful launch of TGSL to Skip. Well, it's very appropriate that it was a, a tracking and data relay satellite, Absolutely. which is the kind of thing that, uh, you know, was, was part of what he did, was yes. tracking and data. So. Well, in that event, uh, I think uh, we're we're pretty much uh, we're going to wrap up our our launch and flight commentary here. We've had a very successful mission. Tetracel is on its own. We're in contact with it on the ground, and uh, by all accounts, this has been a very successful uh, launch and a flight today. So, Tim, thanks very much, and we'll see you at Vandenberg. Sounds good, George. And we're at 1 hour, 56 minutes, 50 seconds into the flight of Tetracel. This is Atlas Launch Control. <laughs>